Welcome, Courtney Yasmine to the Share Dial Show. And you are a singer, songwriter, and author, and a producer, and so much more. And I would like to welcome you to the Share Dial Show. And you are a friend of mine and to the show. And you are based out of here in Minneapolis. And welcome, welcome. Thank you so much, Cher. You're just one of my favorite people. And so nice all the time. So excited to be with you. Oh, my God. I know we've known each other for years, and I'm always so glad to um, keep up with you. In fact, um, I came to see you the other night when you were playing in Minneapolis here, and you were kind of showcasing some of your songs from your new album that's coming out. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about the new album and um, kind of a little bit about the songs and the vibe of the album. Well, I'm really, really excited about it, as you know. And um, it's a big departure for me in the sense that I've been making my albums with the same music producer and he's been such a big part of my life and gone on the road with me. And the, the albums had a lot of beautiful backing, singing and a lot of wonderful musical production. And I would tour with the band. Um, and so this is a big departure for me because I'm not working with that producer. Um, okay. even, though we're, even though we're still friends right. and um, I'm not working with a band, um, even though I certainly could and I can. Um, but I just really wanted to do this, just make a statement and and do something where it's just totally just the voice and the guitar, just really simple and make it really, really about the words Right. And I have a lot to say. I really felt like I had a lot to say. And so I decided to just let it rip. Yeah. And you said you were really, you know, at a happy time in your life and it's raw, it's emotional, and it does say a lot. And I think that's so awesome that you can sit there and write the songs about that and put it into words, put it into music, and then sing it and just get it all out and just have people respond to it. Yeah, it's very, very fun. I mean, uh, I've had some really sad albums in the uh -huh. past eight, eight albums, and this is the ninth one. And it's it's got, it's, it's more kind of, um, it's like a very emancipation kind of a vibe, female sure. emancipation vibe. Um, which I think a lot of my songs have in the past have had in them too, but this one is really like 100%. Right, right. I mean, it, we were kind of talking before about how, like, if anybody goes through their life of stages, just how their songs would, or, you know, how their life would sound in songs of stages of their life. So, and I know you said that some of the you know stages in your life and the songs and the albums are not so you know particularly fun to go back to but that's part of life too you know so I know that's you know kind of hard but it's great that you're at a place now that you can you know sing of joy and happiness and you know things like that yeah and also sing about um like one line from one of these new songs is about being the, the truth teller uh -huh. um, and like wanting to tell the truth and wanting to say whatever I want to say. Yeah. And nobody else telling me, you can't say that. <laughs> right, right, right. A lot, and you, there's a lot of that on this album. There's a lot of, oh, I guess nobody told her she shouldn't have said that. <laughs> yeah, really, exactly. And, and the name of the album, maybe you could tell us a little bit yeah. about how that came so about. Name, the name of the album is The Universe's Beloved Wealthy Daughter. Uh -huh. I just, I just, I know that that might be kind of like a, um, you know, that that title will be sort of a curiosity to people, but using the word wealthy in it. Right. And The Universe's Beloved Wealthy Daughter. I mean, it's sort, it sounds sort of arrogant or something. But I thought, yeah, I, I want people to wonder what is she saying? Why is she calling it that? Right. And may maybe then it will make them want to listen to it more. And to me, the theology behind saying that is from the, the last song is a song I used to sing when I was little in church. It's the old, it's a um, in public domain, an old hymn from the 1800s. 
And it has this great, and a lot of people know this song. It has this great line that says, all things are mine for I am loved. Mm. How can I keep from singing? Right. And I feel like it's the, that's that line is like, all things are mine because I'm loved. It, like I believe it was my creator, whatever you want to call it. My creator and I are co-conspiring for my wonderful life. And, and anybody can have that. And anybody can say that. And it doesn't matter what religion you are or anything. Right. And then to say that your, your wealth is that I was always saying I was a starving artist or a s struggling artist, um, that I was hoping someday to have success or hoping someday to have fame and fortune. And I decided to just change that story for myself and just say, I'm doing it, man. I'm totally doing it. And I there's wealth in my, my body of work is wealth. Right. And my health, my good health is wealth. And the fact that I was able to write a whole album of new songs is my own version of wealth. Yes. Definitely. So I get to say it if I want to. And anybody else can say it for themselves too. I mean, that's what I admire about yeah, you. That's the I idea. Right, because I followed you for years. And I mean, that's what I, I really do admire you because yeah. you just put it all out there. You keep going and, and you just keep on going. And what gives you the drive to just keep going? Because sometimes it's got to be hard, you know what I mean? And and you yeah. just keep going, you know? Yeah, I think but, it's that. And I think this is another part of the universe's beloved wealthy daughter is that I think I've, I, I, it's like I turned a corner on the whole thing and I realized that I wrote the first song that I wrote for the public. I was 10 years old and I got to sing at this acoustic service at the big church in Chicago that I went okay. to and I was in the church choir. And they told me that you had to have written it yourself or you had to sing a sacred song really but you couldn't sing like a secular song like a song from the radio and so i thought okay i'll just write my own that's cool <laughs> and i did and and i was only 10 and i loved that experience so much like my name was in the program and it said an original song and i played on my guitar and i just thought it was cool as heck right and i i never let for whatever reason, I personally never let go of that. That was the dream for me personally. Every time I'd go to see a big concert and I'd see someone famous um, performing, I would say to myself, oh, how did they get to do that? Oh, sure. yeah. how can I get from here sitting in the audience to being up there on the stage? And I know not everybody thinks that when they're sitting watching a concert, but I was right. tormented by that thought. My whole right. life. So uh, so I, uh, in the end, like now, like in the end, like with this album coming out, I feel like I decided to say, honestly, this is the only thing I ever really wanted to do. And right. I might as well see it through. And I don't feel that I have done it to the full amount of my vision of what I'd like it, things I'd like to have happen with my music places I'd like to play, s dreams that I have of me playing at certain places, that kind of thing. They haven't happened all yet. Right. So I'm just pushing for it. I'm just pushing. As hard, I'm pushing as hard as I can. And you know, you know, I just, the thing of it is, like you were talking about, like when you were 10 years old, and they said you had to either write a song or, you know, sing a song and you wrote a song. And uh, I mean, I'm not just saying this, but you literally were born with the gift to write because not everybody is born with that gift. And you took it and you have, you know, lived your life with that gift. And thank God that you were able to do that because not everybody is that lucky to have that. You know what I'm saying? And that is You're wonderful. Right. And you're right. And also, I think because, you know, I didn't really have much of a family at all. And uh -huh. I, it, as the years have gone, I have like no family. Thank God I I had three children and I, I'm very close with my kids and I'm very grateful for them. Right. Um, but not having like parents or parents who cared about you at all. I think that I pushed myself harder to 
to write songs uh -huh. um, because I felt like, because I felt like I needed to let out these at that time there's a lot of sad stuff right, right and so I think some people don't push themselves that hard because they don't feel as as frustrated as I felt sure you know, I think it, you know, you have to be pretty darn frustrated to sit there and force yourself to write these songs that will express this inner, yeah. inner pain that you have. Exactly. If you don't have a lot of inner pain going on, you might not sit there and force yourself to write the songs, you know? So yeah. I think that's a big part of it. Exactly. And we were uh, also, you were talking about how, uh, speaking of the church, that this, uh, album was actually recorded in a church maybe you know you could tell us about that because that's an interesting yeah. story too yeah it's so weird that um yeah. so I, I i i really did change my life in a big way this past summer um i, I did some counseling I, I i went to a really good counselor um i i talked to my friends about stuff i really thought about stuff a lot and i i changed where i was living and um, I live in the basement of a church uh -huh. in a studio apartment in Uptown in Minneapolis now. And I've only been there for about six months, but I've been able to pay the rent every month. Right. <laughs> on right. So and then when I was in, I, I got to go to Europe solo on tour in October. First time since the pandemic. That's great. And that was a miracle because I didn't know if I'd ever get to go back. Um, and I didn't know how I would ever do it solo, but I did. And it turned out that some of the places I played that were the most meaningful that my fans who remembered me from 15 years of touring um, were churches that would have these like songwriter series uh, concerts. Uh -huh. And um, in one church in particular, I played in October of 2023 and they didn't, we didn't use any microphones or anything. We just used my acoustic guitar and my voice and we all, my old fans who I've known for a long time, we all loved that concert so much that that was when they got the idea. They were like, what if you, what if you did a solo album with this sound, like the echo of a, of a church chapel? Uh -huh. And they talked about me staying in Germany and doing it there. And I was like, no, that's never going to happen. But I think I can find a place in Minnesota. And so, so I did the, the home church that I've been a part of um in the twin cities they were great about um championing that idea and a guy named john estrom helped produce and and we got it done and we have we have 11 it has to be 11 because that's like the universe is 11 11 we are all one thanks so oh, okay. songs so it is 11 songs and we recorded them um, with the microphones all around the chapel. So it, it really oh my God. That's catches be the sound and yeah. we listened to it and all together last Sunday and I thought it was majestic. That's the word I, I said. And yes. I, I can't believe that I thought something that I would just sing by myself on guitar would have that word come to mind. So I have I have really really positive feeling about it. I'm really looking forward to people hearing it. I really am. Yeah, and that's coming out in May. Did you say? I think it's going to come out in May unless something really positive comes uh -huh. along, which would maybe slow it down, but maybe make it come out in a in a better way, like a distribution deal or anything like that. So I'm going to go out on the road starting next week and meet with some people. And see if anybody has any suggestions. And you're going to, I'm Nashville, going to Nashville, right? And it's the first time you're going down there. Yeah, this is the exciting. very first time you go to Nashville, and I have I I have something set up for every single night now. I do started out really? with nothing set up. Oh my god, <laughs> I do, I do. I have like a songwriter in the round thing one night, right. and I have like a like a featured artist and an open mic another night. I mean, just sm small, casual things, but I get to play every day that I'm there. So oh I'm my God, excited. you're going to be perfect down there. You'll fit in perfect <laughs> down there. I can't wait to hear all about it. I know, I can't <laughs> wait to hear. Yeah, definitely. And then um, you're going on a European tour, right? Yeah, in August this time, I let 
I let my best fans and promoters uh, over there uh -huh. uh, decide when I should come back. I was like, when is the very best time for you guys? And they said, we'd really like if you came um, like near the end of August. So it'll be like August into September. I think I'll be there a month. Okay. You know, Solo. I know. So now I was, cause this is just like, this is just like something I wonder. So now do you book yourself over there? Uh, you do book your dates yeah. over there, and then when you get over there, do you rent a car and go to di the different places yourself, or how does that work? Because I've always well, I'm way, how that I'm, works. I'm way too scared to drive. Okay, and I'm way too scared to drive anywhere, but especially in like a foreign place. So I never drive, but um, I've either been with a band in the past, uh -huh. and then the band guys have driven. Um, but what I'm doing the, last fall, I rode the trains. Um, I, I did oh, wow. 25 shows in 28 days in five countries oh, and I was God. alone, I, I, but every place I went, there were wonderful people that I knew and there were people helping me. Right. Um, but this time I'm going to do it. It's a little smaller circle. I could only be like three countries. And, um, so what countries I, are you going to? So I'm mostly going to be in Germany, Belgium, and the Netherlands. And okay. that's where I really have great fans who I've known now for a long time who've liked a lot of the albums. They know a lot of the songs. Uh -huh. And it's very fun. Very um, fun to go play for them. That is great. Well, um, did you want to maybe play us a song from your upcoming yeah, album? I oh, my God. I am so excited. Okay, yeah. So do you want me to play the like the little bit more fun one or do you want me to play the mama I think he loves me one? I love that one. Yeah. Is that mama. the one you like? Yeah, I All love right, that let me, one. Let me drink some water really quick here and sure. then I'm gonna play So that song, this the album chronicles mm -hmm. the album chronicles this big shift in my life and it it my my love life. In my love life as well. Has, okay. And so this is a this song tells a true story that just happened mm -hmm. um, with my my mom. I went to visit my mom. And really. I, and this is what I talked to her about. And I wrote this song just in like January. I mean, this just happened. Oh my god! How cool! I love it. You hear the guitar? Okay. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Mama think he loves me, but I don't know for sure. I'm so glad you're still around, so we can conquer. Mama think he loves me, but it's so hard for me to know. We bump and burn by man, we lie. That was a long time ago. And mama, he's got these sweet talking ways. Kisses all over my face. Buries his head in my neck. Closes his eyes with a smile on his lips. When we're together, his hands are always holding mine. Always holding mine. The time. So I sit with my mother in the waning light. And even though she's 90 years old, she still lives on her own. And I love her more than ever. She seems to have forgotten that she used to hate me. And that's fine by me. She says, honey, why are you crying? Did this man hurt you? And I say, no, not yet, but I'm sure that he's going to. And I should probably just end it now and avoid all the heartache and pain. My mama shakes her head, looks me straight in the eye, says you're my own daughter and you've disappointed me a thousand times. And I may have disappointed you a time or two as well. We all hurt the ones we love. It's something we all have to learn to rise above. 
Why don't you stick around and see how bad it's going to be? And then you can decide if he's worth all the heartache and pain. Mom, I think he loves me. But I don't know for sure. I'm so glad you're still around. So we can comfort. Mama, I think he loves me. But it's so hard for me to know. We've both been kicked around by love. But that was a long time ago. And he's got these sweet talking ways, kisses up. From my face, buries his head in my neck, closes his eyes with a smile on his lips. When we're together, his hands are always holding mine, always holding mine all the time. So I sit with my mother in the waiting light. She says, don't cry, it'll be all right. Just see where this is leading. He may give you something to believe in. Mama, I think he loves me. I don't know for sure. I'm so glad you're still around. So we can comfort. Mama, I think he loves me, but it's so hard for me to know. And I'm so glad we had this time today. And I know how lucky I am to get to stay. Mama, I think he loves me. Oh, what a sweet song. I don't know why that song just gets to me. <laughs> that is so cute. Thank you. I really oh, like it too. I really I do. Know. I love it. Oh my gosh. That is so cool. You know, um, I had mentioned earlier too that you are an author. Are you in the works of any books at all? Yeah, well, I have the um I as as maybe some people know already, I have the book that's been out for a while now on Amazon and it's been a bestseller for the whole past year, which is cool. It's called it. it's called Sydney, the coldest place and it was the story that I wrote, it came out like maybe five years ago that tells about when I ran away from home and lived up in northern Minnesota uh -huh. and how I loved the music of Bob Dylan. Um, right. so, so that book has been great for me and really helped people understand my life a little bit better. Um, and so I've been thinking about a sequel. I wrote a couple different versions of like a sequel to that book, okay. but, but neither of them do I feel great about. I feel like they're a little bit too... I, the next period of my life after running away was kind of a hard period. It was like in my early twenties. Uh -huh. And I just, I just didn't, I don't know. I don't feel like that's a, a it's like a, not an uplifting enough story. Like right. I didn't really learn a lot of lessons during that time period. So the, the stuff I wrote to try to describe that, I don't think is really meaningful enough for people. So what I did do though, that I am really excited about is I decided to make a, um, 11 chapters for this new album so there's going to be a book i wrote it already it's all done um really? it's called the universe's beloved wealthy daughter okay and every of the 11 chapters is the title of one of the songs and so each chapter starts out with the title of the song and all the lyrics of that song and then it's just like the rest of the chapter is just like a memoir piece of like what was going on because those these songs on this new album they're like chronological they tell a very specific story okay about how i ended up living in the basement of the church how i went to europe solo they okay. just tell the story like the past year of my life nice so so the book kind of just goes through that whole thing 
And sure. I think it's really, I think it's really cool. I've never done that before with one of my albums, like written a chapter for each song. Sure, sure. Oh, that's great. Oh my God. And I wanted to mention your daughter too is now um, a singer songwriter. And yeah. uh, that's great. Yeah, that's my uh, oldest, she's doing my oldest well. daughter. Nina yeah. Luna. She's my Nina Luna. She's my oldest. Yeah. yeah. So that's great following in her yeah. mother's uh, footsteps. <laughs> so that's great. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. But yeah, I am just um, so happy for you with um, all your uh, things going on. I'm so glad that you're going to be uh, and you're you're going on the U.S. tour and uh, I know I'm going to, you're kind of got a GoFundMe thing going on too. And I'm going to post yeah. that because that'll help a lot too with things. That would help a lot. I have to say that if anybody wants to make a donation um, to get this album out properly, that would be wonderful. Thank oh, you. Oh, definitely. Oh my God. Look at this little guy here. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> this is W. Ed Posner. He's from my old show that I used to have for eight years, World Exposure. And he- yeah. He used to come in at my old show and bring me questions Yay. for my guest. And so he brought in a question for you. Hey, okay, it's good. good to see you. I haven't seen him in a couple of years. Thank you. All right. Well, he uh, he brought in a question for you from a, uh, a fan, okay? Uh, and they want to know that if you could go back or forward to any era – what would it be and what would you be doing in that era? Oh, that's great. Um, yeah. well, I really think that I, I always wanted to be part of what Bob Dylan and Pete Seeger and oh, yeah. Guthrie and the writers, John Steinbeck and J Jack Kerouac. Uh -huh. um, I think that's all like 1950s. Right. Um, but uh, but like not 1950s like rock and roll but like the 1950s like folk music and right music. i i th that's where i would go and i like their clothes i like those clothes a lot so right. that's where i'd go that's funny because like me like i know pe pe people don't know this about me but like i am like addicted to like old uh noir movies like betty davis joan crawford and i always look at their clothes and i go if i could go back i'd be an actress in in those movies era you know the golden era of television you know so isn't that funny that you know back in the 50s like your you know era and the same thing is there was just something magical about those days with you know those people and something about it you know it's yeah. just crazy yeah. it was just a simpler life you know and yeah. uh it was just it was crazy, but uh, so you have a um a GoFundMe to help with uh things, and I know I'll I'll post that, and then um where can uh people find out more about your music, your albums, and uh everything else about Courtney? Okay, thanks for asking. I think the best thing to do my website CourtneyYasmine dot com okay. is the best thing to do because it has all the social media links, has all the YouTube stuff. One thing that I feel like people don't realize is that I have a lot of music videos on YouTube, mm. tons and tons of music videos on YouTube. And if you just can go to YouTube and just put in Courtney Asmine, you could watch videos all, all day and all night, I think. Right. And some of them are like filmed in Europe and some are filmed at South by Southwest and they're filmed all over the place. And I, I think they're pretty cool. So that's they are. A, fun, a fun suggestion is to go on YouTube and look up Courtney Hasmina and see what you find. Oh, you know, definitely. I mean, I know I've uh, I've looked up a, a lot of them, too. And it's just uh, like I love Red Roses and Cowboy Dreams. I love that song, too, and that album. And yeah. uh, th there's just so many good, you know, albums and songs of yours and everything. So, I, yeah, I, people will definitely look them up. And I'm so glad that we had this time together to um, talk and reminisce and to uh, hear you sing. And like I said, it's always been a pleasure. And I'm just so happy and always so excited to hear all the great things and just to see you just flourish 
in whatever you do. I really, you know, I mean that, you know, and I'm just, no, always just so, um, so happy to uh, always, you know, see all the great things that you're doing. Thanks. And also the same to you, because it's really awesome to be able to talk about what I'm doing with a person who understands what a, a lot of things about life oh, and uh -huh. a lot of things about music and a lot of things about the music industry and a lot of what it takes. And um, I really appreciate that about you, you know, that I get, I get to talk to a woman. Oh yeah. Who, who I, I feel like you, you have the life experience yourself with all the cool things you've done that you can relate to what I'm doing. You know, I really yeah, appreciate it something. Yeah. It's like a mutual thing with us. I don't know. We have this connection. That's just, just kind of strange, but it's cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're lucky. You're lucky. And like I said, I came to see your show and if anybody gets a chance, please go out and see Courtney. Cause I know you play around here in Minneapolis and check because you're going to be playing uh, around the uh, country and yeah. over in Europe, and uh, it's definitely a show not to miss. So thank, thank you, you once again for joining us here on the Share Dial Show, and uh, we will definitely be in touch. Okay, I love you. Love you too, Courtney. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.